Hello there, everybody. Welcome back to the channel today. Going to be ranking Planet of the Apes movies for you all. Trying to keep up with these current franchise rankings like I just did for Godzilla when that one came out. So you'll be seeing a lot of these this summer. But to get to Planet of the Apes, one of the seminal sci-fi franchises, one of the original sci-fi franchises, a franchise that has done so much for the sci-fi genre, not just in terms of effects and marketing and all that type of stuff, but from a story perspective, seeing real life events, allegories played out in sci-fi fashion. This is one of those franchises that, that kind of originated that style of storytelling. And we're back in a big way with Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. I saw it the other day. I can't wait to talk about it here and rank the rest of them. So without further ado, let's get into the rankings. Starting off, of course, with the original 1968 Planet of the Apes. 1968 was a crazy year for science fiction, horror, genre movies. You have the original Planet of the Apes, which of course has a lot of allegories towards real life, especially in the late 60s, but was revolutionary for its makeup and effect the twist ending that is kind of like the Empire Strikes Back where everybody knows it but you kind of don't know it was even a twist originally. I'm probably going to have to talk about spoilers obviously to get through these rankings so if you haven't seen these movies and you want to watch them I guess come back or skip to the ones you have seen. As with most first movies in franchises this is one of the best movies in the whole series. It's easily an S tier. And from top to bottom, this is such a fantastic movie. I highly recommend it if you haven't given it a chance. And if you're thinking, oh, maybe the effects will look dated, especially compared to obviously the very realistic motion capture CGI apes that we've seen in the last four films, don't worry. I think you'll enjoy or appreciate if you like the apes. You'll enjoy and appreciate what this story goes for and how it sets the template for the rest of the Apes movies to come. So that means up next is the second film in the franchise, Beneath the Planet of the Apes. And Beneath is such a strange one. Where the original was a nice mix of social allegory with sci-fi action, sci-fi intrigue, sci-fi storytelling, really classic sci-fi. More Star Trek than Star Wars, if you're thinking that way. Beneath really can't find its identity. It wants to be something that's like really bombastic and crazy. And let me tell you, the ending of this movie, I've never seen a movie go 0 to 100 like Beneath the Planet of the Apes. This movie is insane. I couldn't have guessed the ending of this the first time I saw it. If you gave me a million dollars to guess the ending, I probably couldn't have guessed it. Since Charlton Heston really had zero interest in returning for this film, he only appears in the beginning and the end. He disappears for the entire middle portion of the film where we switch to a different character who looks exactly like him. Just for its crazy ending alone, I kind of want to put it in C tier. This is a mess of a movie. It has two completely disparate acts that make no sense together at all. It continued and doubled down on that nihilistic trend of the endings of these films in the originals, and I kind of appreciate that. Like, I'll always remember the end of this movie. That means next up is Escape from the Planet of the Apes. Even though in Beneath the Planet of the Apes, a nuclear bomb is detonated that destroys the entire planet, apparently a few of the apes actually escape in Taylor's rocket before the planet blows up. Two of our favorite apes, of course, are the ones that escape, Zira and Cornelius. Instead of going into the future where the apes are ruling the planet, they go back in time to present day, which was 1971, and become semi-celebrities in 1971 Los Angeles. This movie also has two very different tones to it, but I think they work very well together, whereas Beneath completely shifts its plot from kind of cheesy sci-fi movie to nihilistic world-ending film. Escape builds you up and builds that tension underneath your nose the whole time. Cornelius and Zira go from celebrities to now characters that the rest of the humans are frankly afraid are going to lead to their downfall. It's a plot that obviously is pretty realistic. If, if these talking apes came to our planet, the government, the doctors, the scientists, they'd be pretty concerned about what the future of humanity might mean, while the rest of us in the public would be like, no, we love these guys. Typical to these original films, the ending is very nihilistic, it's sad, it's heartbreaking, and I kind of loved it. It's a bit of a messy movie, especially tonally, so I can't put it right at the top tier of these movies, but I'll put it in B. It's certainly a big step up from beneath. After that, that leads to the fourth film from 1972, it's Conquest of the Planet of the Apes. Conquest is a lot darker start to finish. It's maybe the darkest apes film from start to finish in the entire franchise. The film starts about 20 years after the events of the last movie, and this time apes are all enslaved. It's a little messy in its world building. There were some questions that I had watching it, like about the backstory, about this time jump, that it doesn't necessarily do a great job of answering. We have the new character of Caesar here, who is a very good character, and I think that's the thing that works best about this movie. Caesar's rise, the struggles he goes through, all of the stuff that 
pushes him to who he becomes at the end I think works pretty well. This one obviously has the most allegory towards race relations, especially for 1972. It's not trying to pretend it's some sci-fi spectacle, it really just goes for what it wants its message to be about. I would also rank Conquest for the Planet of the Apes in B tier with the caveat that this is the unedited ending, which I like so much better, although it, you know, it doesn't work with the next film, but I like so much better with the nature of the nihilism of this franchise, how dark that that ending is it's really good i think it pays off for the rest of the film the film is a bit more disjointed though than escape that's why it's behind but still a b-tier movie really solid so then that leads us of course to the fifth and final film in the original apes series and that is battle for the planet of the apes there's no real sugar coating that battle for the planet of the apes is not very good it takes the original ending of conquest which is more peaceful obviously more optimistic more hopeful and it runs with that this there's another time jump in this movie where humans have led to you know their own downfall cities are destroyed they're living in a mad maxian post-apocalyptic world and while that's all very interesting we don't really explore that much instead we go with kind of this story that's similar to the prequels we've seen from the planet of the apes the last four about how do humans and apes coexist in this world it's really the first one of the last three that really tries to expand kind of the mythos and the world building but unfortunately the budget for this one was so small that the, the battle sequences are not very good and instead of feeling like a battle that will define the world of the planet of the apes this movie just kind of feels like a battle that defines a couple of moments maybe a city caesar is still a strong character always enjoy seeing roddy mcdowell in the makeup but unfortunately this movie just doesn't do anything new for the franchise and the ending it's not as nihilistic as i would hope from this type of franchise i'm going to put battle for the planet of the apes in d tier next up is 2001's planet of the apes remake starring mark Wahlberg, directed by tim burton i think this movie completely misses the mark for what the planet of the apes was this is a remake so you don't necessarily have to copy the same story or the same characters but what you should be copying is the tone and the feel of planet of the apes this movie decides to kind of ignore all that for big budget sci-fi spectacle and the spectacle does work that's the best part of this film the costuming and makeup are absolutely mind-blowing this is the best the makeup effects for the apes have ever looked but i wasn't into the story here i'm not into the characters the movie is surface level at best it doesn't go for anything really unique it doesn't try to put its stamp on the messaging of the series before or create a new message that you can really identify with this movie on a technical level it is much better than battle for the planet of the apes no doubt but i would put it at the bottom i think it's the one film that just sticks out as completely missing the mark that leads us to rise of the planet of the apes and this is actually my first apes movie this is a great movie it has heart it makes you fall in love with caesar which is very difficult because caesar you know barely talks in this movie this one really does a great job of embodying its ape characters really making you feel and care about them but also caring about the humans caring about the story caring about the world andy circus phenomenal as always as caesar one of the best characters he's ever performed and similar to the original what this film does for visual effects even in 2011 was just mind-blowing the step up from golem to caesar is absolutely crazy i do think this is the weakest of the trilogy i would put it in a tier but i still think it's a really solid movie after that is dawn of the planet of the apes which is where my shirt is from uh, this movie is amazing i absolutely love this movie the heart of the movie is in its character it doesn't go for spectacle first although there are great action scenes and the spectacle here is so high there's incredible shots and matt reeves does a great job of bringing an elevated sense of action and drama to these sequences like i'll never forget the one sequence when koba leads the assault on the the human settlement and you see that shot from the tank that just keeps going on the tank it's it's a beautiful shot there's so many incredible scenes in this movie and as you can kind of expect from my gushing over this i absolutely love this movie this is my favorite planet of the apes movie it is at the top of s tier and then that brings us to the second to last movie in the prequel trilogy and that is war for the planet of the apes war for the planet of the apes is also an excellent movie and i do really love how character focused this movie is that turned a lot of people off especially when you call it war for the planet of the apes they did kind of mismarket it they set it up for this big epic battle taking the big epic action sequences 
of Dawn and elevating them to a war level. It was something I was pretty hyped for, and then you watch the movie, and it is more of like an Apocalypse Now style war movie than necessarily a Saving Private Ryan style war movie. And the character of Caesar is even more well defined in this film. Like it's outstanding what. Andy Serkis did with that arc for Caesar from beginning to end. This is still one of the best Planet of the Apes movies. I go back and forth between War and the original Planet of the Apes because I love to appreciate originals. I love to appreciate what they do for franchises, how they set it all up, how they moved a genre forward. I think War might be a better movie overall, but I'm going to put it slightly behind Planet of the Apes. Maybe I'd need to do a rewatch of War soon. That brings us to Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, the newest film that jumps in time, doesn't feature Caesar, although Caesar's stamp is all over this movie, which I absolutely loved. Instead, we have a new character named Noah who is leading this series, and I hope it's a series, this is a great movie. This movie looks incredible. It is the best looking CGI apes movie for sure. The pace of this movie is a little off in the middle. I wouldn't say it gets boring because I was always interested in the lore of the movie, the world building, the steps we're taking towards getting to the end, but it does slow down dramatically. There are some great action sequences in this movie that make up for those slower moments. I also think the villain of Proximus Caesar is a great villain. He's really interesting. Kingdom is just a really solid to great Planet of the Apes movie. And I think because it has more heart, because it goes for a message a bit more, and it really defines its characters, it sets us up for a very fascinating future for this franchise, a future that I want to see very badly. I liked Kingdom a lot. Maybe in a future rankings, it might drop a little, but I think I'm going to put it in A tier, slightly above Rise of the Planet of the Apes. So thank you all so much for watching my tier list. Let me know how you would rank the Apes franchise in the comments below, and let me know what you would like to see for more tier lists. I'm trying to do a tier list every single time a major entry in a big franchise comes out. Let me know if you'd also like to see more top 10s instead of the tier list format. I will try to accommodate that if you guys prefer top 10s. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you all next time.